Okay, so let's look at this topic of overplotting. Now in this data set, you see all these points. In reality, there are 234 points in our data frame, in the MPG data frame. But it looks like only 126 points are visible. What happened to the remaining points? Okay. The remaining points did not show up because what is happening is that they are being overplotted. That is, you got a point, and then on top of that, you've got another point that has been plotted, right? So many of these points are actually one point plotted on top of another point. So you're missing some information from this. That is happening because of overplotting. Now, what are the strategies we can use to avoid overplotting? One strategy, this is the original plot. One strategy is what is called jitter. Right, so in geom point, you can add position equals jitter. Right, so it's like jittery. So what that does is, for every point, it adds a little bit of noise on the data. Right, so it takes a point, and then it calculates a small random number for the x-axis, and another small random number for the y-axis and it shifts the point a little bit. Okay, So every single point gets shifted by very little. I mean, not big enough that uh, it makes a big, it changes the data itself, just jitters it a little bit. Okay, And the point with jittering is that no two points will get jittered in exactly the same way. Right. So if there were two points that were being overplotted, the two of them will get, get jittered differently and therefore the plot will look different. Okay, So we took the same plot, we jittered it, and then we get a different result. Right? So notice here, there are two points here. Notice here, there's only one point. Okay? So that was actually an overplotted point, and the overplotting has now become evident because of jittering. Right? And the jittering is so small that it doesn't really change the data at all. And in any case, the jittering is only for display. The underlying data is not changed. This is only for display purposes. Okay. So whenever there is overplotting, you can always do jittering to get uh, more information out of that. Okay. So jitter just adds random noise, and uh, this is sometimes very common because after all, when you are plotting large data sets, you will need to jitter it somewhat. So instead of saying geom point position equals jitter, you can just say geom jitter. And then treat it, treat everything else just like geom point. Okay, so that's just a small uh, shortcut that you can use. Okay, so what is the problem with the following plot? How can you improve it? Okay, again, this is the same MPG data set. Okay, you see this, uh, and we are saying x is city, y equals highway. That is, city mileage and highway mileage are being plotted against each other. So no wonder you see this almost straight line trend. Because a car which is more fuel efficient will have a higher city mileage and a higher highway mileage. The two things are very closely related to each other. So all the points seem to fall on a straight line pretty closely. right? But again, we know that there are 276 points and we are seeing barely you know, less than 100 points uh, here. You know, Maybe 70 odd points is all we are seeing. So clearly we know the issue is jitter. So we can use uh, position equals jitter here, geom point, position equals jitter, or simply instead of geom point, we can just say geom jitter. And suddenly you see that all of these points have been split up, uh, separated out, and so we now see more points being plotted. Okay, so now there is also the concept of coordinate systems. Okay, so let's take this example. Uh, incidentally, this is how you plot box plots. So we are saying ggplot data equals mpg mapping equals aesthetic axis class, right? So we are back to our mpg data set, not the diamond data set. So in the mpg data set, there is an attribute called class, which is the class of each vehicle, okay? Which is like compact, subcompact, luxury, etc. And y is the highway mileage. So in other words, what we are saying is, give me a separate box plot for every class of vehicle and plot for me the highway mileage. Right? So obviously you're going to have as many bo boxes as there are classes and for every class you're going to get 
the box plot of the cars that belong, box plot of the highway mileage of the cars that belong to that class, right? So clearly you expect to see many box plots and that's what happens. See, uh, so this is the box plot for all the two-seater cars. This is the box plot for all the compact cars and so on, right? So you can see here that there are, there is considerable variability in the box plots for each of them. Uh, the median is different and also the spread seems to be different and so on. Okay. In fact, it looks like the mid-size cars are the ones with the highest median. Okay. Uh, and of course, there is a way by which you can order the bars by the median value. Uh, I don't recall off the top of my head what the code is, but I'll uh, I'll post that in some future session. We'll we'll use that. Okay. So now, when you are having many box plots, and uh, you know your variable names are somewhat large. In this case, the variable names are not very big, so it's all right. Uh, not the variable names, but the category names. Uh, once they become big, they start overlapping with each other, right? So to prevent that you may want to plot the, plot the boxes horizontally. So you can tell the system to flip the coordinates, flip the x and y coordinates. Although I said x is class and y is highway, normally it should come like this, but we are saying flip them. So that whatever is supposed to come on the x axis, put it on the y axis and vice versa. Okay. So now what happens is that even if your uh, class names are very large, they are not going to overlap with each other. Okay. But otherwise, the information is exactly the same. It's just flipped around. That's all. So you can use co-ord flip to achieve that. Okay. Uh, so here's another uh, small example. Uh, and this is illustrating something else as well. Notice this first. See, usually we just say ggplot plus, 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 plus. Okay. So we mark everything right down here as one statement. But here what we did is we said ggplot, etc., etc., okay, and then we assigned the result to a variable called bar, okay. In R, whenever you assign the result to something, the system does not produce any output. So, for example, suppose I go here, uh, let me type uh, right here, right. Suppose I type x is 100 or 1000, right. Notice that it did not produce any result. Okay. Later, if I do x, it will produce the result. Okay. On the other hand, if I just type 1000, it will produce 1000. Right. So the moment you assign something to a variable, then R goes silent. It doesn't show anything uh, on the output. Okay. Similarly, that's what happens here too. You said ggplot, etc., etc. Normally, this should have plotted something, but uh, it's not plotting anything because you assigned it all to a variable. So R goes silent. Okay, so that's what this is. But if you want to plot it later on, I can say bar plus coord flip. So that'll be like saying all of this plus coord flip. Then it'll plot the result. The first plot will result in this, right? Because normally it would have been. A regular bar plot with uh, with the cut coming on the x-axis and the counts coming on the y-axis. But now we said flip the coordinates so this happened. Okay. But how come there is no legend on the x-axis or y-axis? Even though we have different colors, how come there is no legend telling us the colors? Right. All that is happening because we said geom bar x equals cut, fill equals cut, show dot legend is false. So we said skip the legend. Width equals 1, that's just, uh, you know, each bar is width 1, doesn't matter. Theme is aspect dot ratio equals 1. Right? Now, those who are familiar with some photography will know that aspect ratio is the ratio of the x and y axis. So, here we are saying, make this length of the x axis and the length of the y axis, make them the same. So, that's what this aspect ratio is 1. And then we also said, don't put any labels on the x-axis or y-axis by using labs x equals null y equals null that's why you don't see any labels in this axis right so we're just showing you some other things you may not use these at all so when i say bar plus quad flip i get this but there is also something called as polar coordinates 
right. I am not going to interpret this graph for you. It looks very fancy and sophisticated, uh, but for this particular purpose, it is not a great graph. Uh, there is a, I mean, this is more easy to understand than this, right. But there is a notion of polar coordinates, and for some kind of situations, polar coordinates are actually easier to interpret. Let us look at this plot. What does the plot below tell you about the relationship between city and highway mileage? Why is coord fixed important? Okay. What does geom A blind do? So the plot here says data equals MPG, mapping exists city mileage, y is highway mileage plus point geom point plus geom A blind plus coord fixed. Okay. So what this is telling you is geom point we understand that is what produced this scatter plot and of course we know that there is over plotting going on here from earlier discussions. Geom Abe line what that does is that plots a 45 degree line starting from 00, point 00, zero. okay. So if you go to the point 00, zero uh, the line uh, starts there, okay and then it plots a 45 degree line that is called as Geom Abe line, okay. Then it says coord fixed that means make the coordinates of the same size. Okay. And the reason is if you want to compare these two you want to get an idea of which is higher. Clearly what this is telling you is here is your 45 degree line. All the points are above the line which means the highway mileage is always higher than the city mileage. Okay. That is why this plotting the Abe line is what shows us that all the points are above the line. If you did not plot it, you would not have a good idea of all the points being above the line because you might think the, uh, the actual line goes through like this, right. But you know that this is the line which is x equals y. That is what geom Abe line is doing. So this, this is x equals y and so here you see that y is always greater than x and that shows you that highway mileage is always better than city mileage for all the cars. Of course, that is what we expect. So that is why coord fixed is important to uh, show us this. So the coord fixed and the geom Abe line combined together give us this better uh, interpretation. Okay. Uh, so now we're going to show you some other things. You know, sometimes you want to plot a graph and then you know add some additional lines to it. So once again, we do p equals gg plot plus geom point. Normally, this would have produced a scatter plot, but now it's not producing a scatter plot because we assigned the result to this variable p and when you assign r just goes silent. Now we say p plus geom v line x intercept equals 5. In other words, geom v line draws a vertical line and this x intercept tells it where to put the vertical line. Okay. So that is, so the, the scatter plot was created by this, it is another data frame empty cars, it is also inside uh, the system and x axis is weight, y axis is NPV. Notice that we have start, we have switched. In fact, uh, here we have switched to a more succinct representation, right? We didn't say data equals empty cars because the first argument for GD plot is always data equals. So let's get hold, get rid of it and just do data set, and then mapping equals aesthetic. We said the second argument to GD plot is always the mapping, so you can leave out mapping equals. Okay. And within aesthetic, the first is x, second is y, so you do not have to say x equals weight, y equals mpg. Okay. So all of this shortens our ggplot calls plus geom point. Right? So this produces uh, the scatter plot, but it will not produce it because we are assigning it. And then when we say geom v line, we get the vertical line. Okay. So we are saying at x equals 5, we want a vertical line. So we say geom v line x intercept equals 5 and that is what produces this particular line. Okay. Or if you want multiple lines, we said x intercept equals 1 colon 5, so you get the lines from 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Okay. So this is how you draw x and y uh, uh, vertical lines. Here we will see horizontal lines, it is called geom h line and then you say y intercept equals 20, that is a horizontal line. Okay. But now we are doing P plus, that is P is this, plus geom Abe line, which is the 45 degree line, right? Nothing is coming up. What is the problem? Why is no line coming up? 
The problem is Geom A blind does a 45 degree line starting from 0, 0, right? Now notice that the maximum x value is only 5 and the minimum y value is 10, right? So the line is actually going somewhere uh, from here to here, right? It's going from 0, 0 to, to 5. The A blind, remember, is a, is a 45 degree line. So it's a 45 degree line going from, from here to here. It's outside of the range of this graph, okay? If you want to change it, you can change it by doing geom A blind intercept is 20. In other words, start it at y equal to 20. That's what's going on, okay? Now, you may say, well, why is it not starting at y equals 20? Well, because this is not 0. 0 is somewhere here, right? So if you plot, put the line here and take this down, then you will see that this line intercepts 0 at uh, y equals 20, right? So now this is a 45 degree angle line, but it doesn't look like a 45 degree angle line because the coordinates here are so wide, the coordinates here are pretty dense, okay? If you made them both equal, then you would see that this is actually a 45 degree angle line, which cuts the x axis, uh, the y axis at y equals 20, okay? So by default, when you just do geom A blind, the intercept is zero, right? And geom A blind has another parameter called slope. Okay, slope tells us how slanting it is. By default, slope is one. So if you did this, you'll get a slope of minus five. Okay, so this is all useful if you want to plot individual lines. So X, you know, you see many times you draw a chart and then you want to highlight certain things on the chart. So you may have to draw some additional lines which your normal geoms won't do, right? So to highlight and tell your story, you may want to add additional lines. That's why you use geom A line or geom H line or geom V line, okay? Okay, let's look at one more thing here. Again, we created this uh, same thing. We are plotting uh, the weight and MPG and we are using the short form. We are not saying data equals, we are not saying X equals Y equals, we are not saying mapping equals geom point, so you're going to get a scatter plot. But this time, once again, uh, uh, since you're assigning it, there's no result that comes up. But when you do P plus geom smooth, method equals LMSE equals false. Notice that earlier, whenever we used geom smooth, we never said method uh, equals anything. We just took the default, right? And the default smoothing that R does is something called as low smoothing. It's local uh, smoothing that it does, right? But you may say, I wanted to use the regression, linear regression line for smoothing. If you want that, you say method equals LM. You already know that LM is the function used for linear regression. So when you say method equals LM, it's going to give you the, uh, the linear regression line. And normally, whenever you use any smoothing, it will always show you the confidence intervals. You say SE equals false, no confidence intervals. Okay, so that's also another thing. Uh, whenever you want the, uh, the smooth line, you can always say smooth method equals LM. Okay, now this slide I'm going to skip over. It's not very important as, as I'm going to skip over this one as well. So basically, this is the general syntax for ggplot. Okay, so ggplot, uh, usually we put data equals inside ggplot, but again, as you've seen, you may sometimes put data elsewhere. And then geoms, many geoms, and within the geoms mapping, stat we'll hardly use, position sometimes, and then you may want to play around with the coordinates, flip the coordinates, and then you may have to produce several plots, which is faceting, okay? So this is what they call as the layered grammar of graphics, right? So you first put the ggplot call, and then you layer on top of, or one on top of the other, whatever features you want, okay? So that, for the time being, completes our discussion of ggplot. Again, note that uh, we have just shown you the mechanics of plotting different types of graphs, okay? I have not really gone into uh, how to decide what kind of plot to do. Or when you're given a data set, how can you use plotting to explore the data and generate questions? We have not looked at all of those things. We'll be looking at that uh, in a later part of the course when we've got some more data manipulation skills, okay? So for now, 
think of this this session and the previous session as just teaching you the mechanics of generating different types of graphs or visualizations okay so that ends the course uh, ends the uh, this session uh, i'll be shortly posting uh, the assignment for this week it's not yet up on blackboard uh, i hope to have it up early tomorrow okay so that's the end of the session thank you